Well, the boys' six picks returned 55% return on investment last week with four winning plays from half a dozen selections, including three plus money bets that cashed time. We hope for more of the same. Welcome to Betting Weekly Extra Time European Edition. You're with myself, Dan Roebuck, while senior handicapper Steve Wiss is also with me. And as we weave our way through the best bets across the continent, we have our usual head-to-head challenge this week, defending champion and editor of Football España, Rory Barlow, takes on pro better Will White. Steve, an upswing in form from the team last weekend. Uh, and this week, a La Liga heavy battle between Rory and Will. Yeah, I think we almost might as well call this show a La Liga preview show with the picks that are going to be churned out soon. But uh, I want to congratulate Rory on two brilliant picks last week, uh, two out of two from him, myself and James. I think the pleasing thing from myself and James's perspective is that the uh, two unders cashed, which is a little bit outside of our own wheelhouse. But um, yeah, overall, it was a good profitable show and uh, true to form. As soon as I was bigging up the hot dogs, they all got burnt, didn't they? So hopefully the dogs can uh, start frying again this uh, this round. Yeah, it's the nature of the bet, I think. Right, we're going to kick off. Um, with Rory's thoughts on uh, Girona against Valencia. This is ATM uh, Saturday, US time. Uh, Girona minus 148, Valencia plus 390, draw plus 295. Uh, Rory, Girona, the darlings of the betters this season. I don't know what the reception is like in Spain. They've won 11 of of 14, huge level stakes profit of 11.1 with a return on investment of 79.3 if you've been playing them every single week. I mean, are they considered plucky underdog or because of who owns them are they frowned upon in spain just talk about girona first of all i think to be perfectly honest i think it's more of a thing in england that people are like ah their city group that's not that much of a miracle that kind of thing because in spain they see a side that although yes they do have links to city and they do have a little bit more money i mean they still have a salary limit so they're limited to what they can spend by what they bring in so i think theirs is down in the last kind of six or seven they have about 50 million limit on what they can spend on wages so this is a team that's not spending masses of money and um, it's a team that was only promoted two seasons ago i think in spain people are pleased to see somebody taking the game to real madrid barcelona atleti and more than that a team that just plays really good football. They're the best team in Spain to watch this season. They've been playing the best football and they scored the most goals. And yeah, for a side that were in Segunda two years ago, it, it really is impressive. I think most people in Spain are quite enjoying it, to be honest. And do you believe that their good run is going to continue against Valencia this weekend? Yes, I do. I'm going Girona and over one and a half goals total. That comes back at minus 104. Valencia are not a bad side, but... I just like Girona too much. I mean, Girona dropped points against Athletic Club on Monday night. It was a 1-1 draw, but I thought they were a little bit unlucky to to not get the result there. I mean, Artem Dovbeck was missing. He's obviously their top scorer. And behind Jude Bellingham, I think he's got the most goal contributions in La Liga still. So, so yeah, he's a massive loss. He could be back for this match. It's a Girona side that still created tons of chances without him, and it was really back and forth. Against the Valencia, that as I say, they're not a bad side, but they are much stronger at home. Um, away from home, it's one, three, and three. They are three draws and three defeats. Um, against the kind of big sides, I think it's one, one, and three. I think they had that big win against Atleti at home, which was a bit of a freak result. But outside of that, the teams that they've been playing that have been kind of further up the table, they've not really managed to compete with. And there's been talk in, in midweek that uh, they're trying out Mus- uh, Mukhtar Diakabi, who's this huge ginormous central defender in central midfield to kind of shut Girona down and for me if you look at the teams that have gone against Girona none of the ones that sat deep have really had much success in keeping them out so I I like Girona to to break the one and a half goals here probably on their own to be perfectly honest but yeah minus 104 for them to win and over one and a half goals is the bet. Steve have you been on the Girona train this season? I I certainly have at periods yeah Uh, their offensive metrics are really good a bit worried about the defensive uh, metrics and, um, you know, they're not really reliable to keep enough clean sheets. I think at some point they, they are going to fade a little bit. I, they're not going to finish in the top three, are, are they? Let's be realistic. But, um, you know, I think they've got a good chance of being in the top six. This is, I mean, this looks a fair price, in fairness. Um, you know, are there some recent signs that Girona are just starting to tail off a little bit? They, they have trailed in three of the last five games at some point, which is interesting. 
thought last week it was a, a, a fair draw. Bill Bauer are a better side than than Valencia, though, aren't they? That's the thing. Valencia, I, I really get a tough read on them. They can be anything week to week, can't they? I don't. I think they're just the definition of mediocrity. So um, yeah, until this train comes to a halt, I suppose you you best keep riding it. I suppose with Girona. Well, were you looking at this game at all? Yeah, I've looked at this game. I think it'll be a great watch more than anything. I think um, two very young, dynamic sides. I do really like Rory's bet here. Um, and what really tipped the balance for me is it looks like Valencia captain uh, Gaia is going to be missing here. And they're likely to start um, 19-year-old Yarek Gaziarowski. I don't know if I've pronounced that correctly. I don't know if you know much about him, Rory. I certainly don't. I know he's been making some substitute appearances I'm guessing he's come through the academy at Valencia. But yeah, they might have to reshuffle a little bit with the Akabi as well, playing a holding midfield. And I think uh, Corona should be good for the win here. So, Girona to win. Over one and a half goals is to play. Very quickly amongst all of you. Steve referenced top three. What about top four, Girona? Minus 167, top six minus 670. Pretty unbettable. Can they stay the course for a Champions League spot? Rory, yes or no? No, I think they'll finish fifth. I think they'll just miss out. Will? Well, you've said the minus 165, did you say, top four? 167, I mean, top four. Minus 167, that's a terrible price. I'd be I'd be on the other side of that, plus money for sure. Steve? Well, they do have a 10-point buffer to fifth place. That's a big, big um, buffer. But I think ultimately I'm going to say no. I think one of Thossi and Dad or Bill Bow would uh, get ahead of them. Interesting. We'll see how Girona kick on. We hope that they win this weekend for Rory. We stay in Spain for Will's first pick. Osasuna, Real Sociedad. Osasuna plus 250. Real Sociedad are plus 125 here. A lot of changes, Will, for uh, La Real in midweek in their Champions League games. Scuppered some of our plays, um, but I suspect that they will be back to full strength in their game at Osasuna. How are we tackling this one? Yeah, that's when um, that's what tipped the balance for me. The rotations in midweek. Um, I think I fired pretty much as soon as I saw the team sheet midweek on this game because it signals to me that they're going to be going full strength here. And uh, you know they're deep, but the, there is a drop off between the the the, the Onte de Gala and the and the rest of the squad players for me. Real Sociedad, they're only plus 0.11 next at net XG supremacy per game in La Liga this season, which isn't great. But I think the eye test shows all of us that they're much better than that. They've had some breathtaking performances this season. Two wins in the Champions League versus Benfica, particularly the 3-1 at home, was just was breathtaking in front of a very uh, vociferous home crowd. They were also very unlucky earlier in the season, losing 1-0 at home to Barcelona. I know we were on Sociedad plus a quarter of a goal in this show and felt very aggrieved to lose that one. For me, they're clearly the fourth best team in La Liga. I think they're ahead of Girona. They're ahead of Athletic Club. The talent in across the squad is really quite extraordinary with uh, mixing the youth of uh, Kubo, Zubi Mendy, mixed with the experienced Marino, Yathabal, La Normand and uh, Alex Romero. They've actually got five players in the latest Spain squad. And for me, Spain are potentially the best team in Europe, according to my ratings. I know I'll probably get slated for that opinion. But um, on the other side, Osasuna, they're kind of a low middle table team, workman-like, gritty. They get a good support at home. They're a tough nut to crack. But they do tend to get beaten at home by the better teams. This season, they've lost 4-2 to Girona, 2-0 to Atleti, and 2-1 to Barcelona. My model makes Osasuna minus... Nor, uh, sorry, uh, Real Sociedad minus 0.35 goal favourite here. And so getting plus money on them minus only quarter of a goal, only losing half a stakes if it finishes a draw. I think that's a great bet. So I'll be on that. Steve, uh, revenge for you after picking La Real in midweek. Can they bounce back? Well, they still should have won in midweek, even with the rotate team. They were by far the better side. It just shows the depth they've got here. Um, but yeah, the focus would have been on this fixture. I've been seeing that at 11 in midweek. And this is a great, I really love this bet, actually. I think it's a great value pick. The chances of losing your full stake here is really low. They've only lost to, to Real Madrid, Atletico Madrid and Barcelona all, all season in all competitions. So you know, a really solid team. And I'm really a bit worried about Osasuna's metrics. I think... Do we have to class them as, as a bottom six team in La Liga with um, how they're playing, their actual metrics? Yes, I know Rory has said sometimes that this is a difficult place 
to get a result. The crowd really get behind them, but um, it looks to me like Osasuna are training downwards. You've got to lean in this one, Rory. It's on a similar theme, but a bigger price, although it has come in just a little bit. Just uh, just give us your thoughts on the game and your, and your lean plan. Yeah, if you hark back to your youth when you used to hang around in an actual bookies and you actually used to place bets in person, I would have been lurking right behind Will on that Real Sociedad <laughs> bet because I was... <laughs> I was looking at this one and my lean is, uh, I think it's come into minus 128. It was plus 135 when I backed Real Sociedad outright to win this game. Uh, like you say, I mean, the rest of the players, uh, just a, a detail, Imanol Aguafil, the manager, said that uh, it's only because he's embarrassed that Luis de la Fuente, the Spain manager, hasn't called up more Real Sociedad mm. players to his Spain squad. And and yeah, they're just they're a very good team. And also soon, uh, as Steve says, I still think they're a decent enough side, but they're not a side that's in form. They're a side that's making too many mistakes. And as you say, those bigger teams do tend to get the better of them. So, so yeah, I like them to continue their form here. I think this is a, a really solid place to, to place your money this weekend. Not tempted on the money line, Will, at a bigger price? Or is it just not the way you play it? Uh, off the top of my head, I think goal expectancy is quite low here. So I think the chance of the draw is higher than you would otherwise expect. And so, yeah, I've been a bit more conservative. Um, I did notice that Rory got his picks in after mine and kind of ensured that if we go four from four, he does remain champion. <laughs> so uh, props to him for that strategy. I think. No, I'm more about, um, I'm more than happy with the plus, uh, plus 100. I know it's coming a bit, but plus 100 at time of, uh, yeah. of writing on that. Um, uh, we're not playing Girona at minus 167 for top four. Are we playing L'Areal at plus 250, Steve? Certainly. I back them pre-season for the top four, and um, I think they've got every chance of doing it. But they, they are going to have to chase down that 10-point gap to Girona. So uh, that's yeah. the difficulty. Uh, R- Rory, uh, Will, plus 250. Uh, L'Areal to finish top four. They better value than, than Athletic Club, do you think, Rory? I like it. I think they've got room to improve because even though Oya Thabal's been in good form, they've still got Umar Sadiq to actually come back in and start scoring goals. Um, yeah, they've got a couple of players that have room to get better rather than to get worse, and Kieran Tierney also to actually come back into the side and remain fit, hopefully. I, I must admit, well, I don't know what the situation is with the new Champions League next week, but it might be cut next week, next year. But it might become a factor with these teams if nations are getting an extra champions league spot i don't know if spain are in in line for that but that aside a, a l'areal better value do you think or do you like athletic club for top four i i like l'areal yeah i think even um you know we saw the depth of their squad when i think benyat torrientes was the best player on the pitch midweek you know and he's probably fourth or fifth in that midfield pecking order maybe even sixth and so yeah i mean i think they've got the depth to cope with the compact schedule as well so yeah plus 250 seems like a big price to me we are um getting off subject let's get back to some picks here we've got the hot dogs section here we've got three lively outsiders from our handicappers this week uh, we go to france to spain and to germany uh let's go uh Liga. first of all steve uh, what's your big price pick so down the south coast, Monaco against Montpellier. And I'm going straight on the nose for Montpellier to win money line plus 390, Dan. Now, um, this is an interesting one. I've not even mentioned them on this show in the last couple of weeks, but I've, I've been on Montpellier the, their last two games and I've got burnt twice. I don't know how. They've had, they had 50 shots combined against uh, Brest and Clermont. They scored two goals in that period. Um they did get a late equaliser against Clermont, so they got a point. But uh, they're playing better football than their results suggest. They're actually ranking in the top six at both ends of the field in terms of metrics, offensive and defensive. They're one of the three biggest underachievers in terms of expected points this season, along with Lyon and Marseille. I, I, I like Montpellier yeah, fundamentally. I actually couldn't trust them on a plus one Asian handicap though here because they could completely stink the place out as well. So that's why I like uh, taking them on the money line. I'm going to pay to find out if we see a flat Monaco performance, a lazy Monaco performance, which can sometimes happen, Dan. And if that's the case, I think Montpellier have got the players to take advantage. They they won this fixture 4-0 last season. It was a kind of crazy game. Um, I like the goal scoring threat in the team, like Akor Adams, Savanier, Altamari. So it's one of those where I could see Montpellier either getting a good pasting or actually coming here and winning. So uh, 
Yeah, that's why I would much rather back them straight on the nose than, than a handicap. So this is a good definition of a, of a hot dog, really. Uh, good gut feeling, some stats to back it up, and a big price to boot. Plus 3.90 Montpellier to win at Monaco, 9 a.m. Sunday Eastern, 12.30 Sunday Eastern. Rory, uh, you've got to play in Spain for us at a big price, and again on the money line. Yeah, plus 2.15 have gone Villarreal to beat Sevilla outright away from home. This is on Sunday. I mean, Villarreal have put together some disastrous games this season, but if they manage to put in something that's more um, more of a calamity than Sevilla did on Wednesday night against Panathinaikos, that's their Thursday Europa League game, I'll be mightily impressed because Sevilla just collapsed and it's, it's boiling point. I mean, fans leaving before the final whistle when they were beaten by PSV 3-2. Uh, there's a chance for the board to go, for the manager to go. Everyone needs to go, according to the fans. Uh, the, I was listening to Jesus Navas after the game, and his voice was wobbling. It, he was really kind of, uh, for want of a less kind of cliche uh, teenage term, shook after this match. And uh, and yeah, Sevilla just are in such a spiral downwards. Diego Alonso has not won a game that's not in the Copa del Rey. In his nine in charge, he looks like he might be gone after this game if they lose, I think. And Villarreal, as we say, I mean, they're not perfect. Villarreal against Osasuna last week, they conceded a good few chances and perhaps were lucky not to go behind, but uh, ended up winning that 1-3-0. One, one, and I just think Villarreal, Marcelino, they're on the up. Um, Jared Moreno is still in brilliant form. There's too many factors in this one for me to, to go to give Sevilla any credit, really. I mean, they're, they're just in, in free fall. So I think at this bigger price, it's it's certainly worth the risk against the Sevilla side that always compete, always fight, but have a habit of shooting themselves in the foot right now. Yeah, Sevilla collapsed against PSV in the Champions League. We go to the Bundesliga uh, Friday night action locally, 2.30 uh, Eastern. And uh, Will, you're looking at two teams that have uh, struggled this campaign in the German top flight. Yeah, back to the origins of the hot dog for me, really, and that's taking Köln on in uh, Bundesliga. Um, it's 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 I'm bearish about Köln more than I am bullish about Darmstadt. I'm taking Darmstadt plus one seventy here on the money line. Um, the league table underlying metrics show there's not that much between these two, but we have to talk about Köln's away defence. Um, in the last away game, they conceded a massive five xg away to Bochum and only conceded once, I believe, which. You know, it's quite, quite the, uh, quite the, the allowing. goalkeeper had an unbelievable game in that match. Yeah, just, I remember it. It's not often you see over five XG created, but before that, 4.86 versus Leipzig and 3.73 versus Leverkusen. I think it's fair to say that Köln are conceding lots of chances away from home. Um, Darmstadt, I have them rated the worst team in Bundesliga, but there are some signs of improvement recently. They've been competitive in recent draws with Mainz and Freiburg. Little and lucky to lose at home to Leipzig 3-1. The XG battle was fairly equal there. So um, with two fairly equal teams here, you've kind of got to go with the home team plus 170, I think. Um, so yeah, that's my hot dog for the week. Darmstadt plus 170 to beat Köln at home. Three value plays when it comes to action in uh, France and Spain and in Germany. Two away picks and one at home. Back to the challenge, back to a couple of La Liga games once again. Uh, Rory's second selection first up, Almeria Real Betis here. Um, plus 235, Almeria Real Betis are the favourites at plus 112. Almeria without a win in La Liga this season. Uh, Rory, does seem a, a, a fair play if you are going with the away win, which I see you are. Talk us through your Betis play. Yeah, plus 112. I don't understand at all why Almeria are favourites or, or not sort of uh, minus money better, so not minus money in this game. Because, I mean, Almeria have drawn three games this season. Look at those three games. It's Cadiz, Granada and Valencia. Valencia, as we've said, are kind of the height of me mediocrity this year. Granada are in the relegation zone. Cadiz are not far off it. Uh, it's six wins and seven for Betis. Betis are looking good. They're playing really good football, Betis. They... The only draw they've had in those seven was against Sevilla, but that was a derby. It was a raker from Rakitic. They should have won that game as well, to be perfectly honest. And that is the one doubt about them. It's the goals. They don't have a clinical striker this season. Borja Iglesias has been in and out of side. William Jose has had a bit more of a run, um, but they're just playing better football. They're against the side, and I know they're coming off uh, uh, midweek against the Europa League side, Betis against Sparta Prague, but this time it's Almeria side, they're just not very good. They've conceded 37 goals in 14 games. 
They've not had any reaction from Gareska Garitano. I think they've lost six on the bounce now. I think opposing Almeria is the only thing that makes sense in, in their games. And if you've got positive money for a European-level side, it's, it's a no-brainer for me, this one. I mean, uh, football's a funny game, and that's that's why uh, results and that's why we bet on th- these things, because you never know what's going to happen. But, yeah, I can't understand why it's just such a big price, to be honest. Value play, Steve? I was I was looking into this game because, as I always do, I check the card on Thursday. I love betting against teams a bit, a play away from home on Thursday night in matches that matter. And so I was looking, I thinking, you know, I'll, I'll, I'm going to have a go against Betis this weekend. And then I saw who they were playing, and I was thinking, oh no, um, because <laughs> bad bad things happen when you bet on bad teams. So you, you you can't stake a penny on Almeria, but that's the reason why they're this price, Rory. It's because of the Europa League factor, I think. Um, you know, Betis don't have, they've only won one game after they played in Europe this season. Uh, drop points against Cadiz, Alaves, Sevilla, although we'll let them off that because it's a big derby, isn't it? But, um, I mean, Al Maria, how bad are they? That's the problem. They conceded two goals in every game, bar three, um, bar two, sorry. Um, Betis have minus 103 to score two goals or more by, by themselves here. That looks a big price, doesn't it? I quite like over 2.75 goals here. Or for those who don't mind backing a bit shorter, then both teams to score at minus 150. Um, Almeria do have a goal in them, don't they, it seems. But it's just that defence is is a shambles. So if you, it's one of those where it looks a really good bet. For those who don't like taking teams after they've played in Europe, then it is a perhaps a word of caution. Uh, but um, yeah, it's one of those where Almeria just might be just too bad. Will, your thoughts on this one? Not a fan, to be honest, of the best, the better side. This is what we like about the challenge. Come Um, on, we'll stick it to the man. (laughs) (laughs) Almeria, they they do look very poor, but but I do also think they've been unlucky. They they've only they've amassed three points this season, but the underlying metrics suggest they should have amassed twelve point one eight, which is quite the difference. It's not often you see it. I, I don't think they're as bad as the league table suggests. Myself, at the same time, I'm not convinced by Betis's away form. The last four, incredibly, their last four away games have all finished one all. So I would I would suggest plus five seventy five on the one all draw is not the worst bet in the world. They've only won one all season away from home. That was on the opening day against what was then a very poor Villarreal side. Yeah, I don't know. I'm not a fan of taking I'm not a fan of taking around even money on away teams in La Liga generally unless it's uh, one of the big teams. Isco has got Betis ticking, but and then Fekir can come off the bench now. So they are, they've got a lot of creativity. But you know, I, I think El Maria are going to be fighting for their lives here and uh, a home team in La Liga. Are, yeah, I, I, I'm not so keen on the better side here. Could you, could you stomach betting money on bad teams, Will, in any division? I mean, it's an old saying, like I once a mentor of mine once said, bad things happen when you bet on bad teams. Because I love bad things bad happen teams. to bad teams. I personally, right. I love betting bad teams. It's the uncomfortable bets uh, thing, which, you know, you've got to think, like, where's the most of the money going to be coming in this game? Probably for Betis. And, you know, more often than not, I like to be contrarian when the when the money's coming for one side and kind of look for reasons to back the other side. And this, this game would be one of those for me. Interesting. Rory likes Real Betis to win against Almeria at plus 112. Will has got his doubts. Let's get Will's second selection goes in the big game. Uh, these certainly aren't bad teams. Barcelona against the Atletico Madrid, uh, 3 p.m. Eastern Sunday. Barcelona are the favourites, minus 113. Atleti plus 285. Uh, we'll see what happens with the market up until kickoff with that one. Recently tight between these two, Will, in La Liga matchups, and that's the theme of your play here. Yeah, I like the under two and three quarter goals, minus 104. Very surprised to see 2.75 the line here. I was expecting two and a half tops, really. I think market's getting a little bit carried away by a narrative we've spoken about before on this show, on the Champions League show, which is Simeone's new attacking approach since the World Cup last year. Looks like it gave him some time to think about how he progresses and evolves this Atleti team. They've been much more open and attacking since then. The market, I think, is thinking that these two teams have the second and third best attacks in La Liga based off underlying metrics, but perhaps it's neglecting the fact that they're also the two best defences based off underlying metrics. But the statistics don't lie. Like you said, Dan, five of the last six between these two, under two and a half in La Liga, 
sorry, under two and a half and 10 of 13 in La Liga. Also, um, eight of 11 under two and a half Athletic Real Madrid. So I think that's enough evidence to show that when, you know, he's facing the big two team, the other two big teams in La Liga, Simeone does look to rein it in a bit. And I suspect he'll look to tighten up here. Um, the last match between these two in April of this year was a 1 0 Barca win at home. And the line on that day was over or under two and a quarter, so a full half a goal difference. And I don't think we've got enough evidence to justify such a big shift in the line. Also, both teams are coming off quite big use, uh, Champions League games midweek, so it might be a little anticlimactic here. Another factor I quite like about this underplay is I've got a feeling that um, Cancelo might be deployed on that doble lateral, kind of high up on the right side ahead of Koundé, which would kind of, in my eyes, mean that Barca are setting up slightly more defensively and looking for some defensive solidity playing Balde there at left back. So, um, yeah, all things considered, much rather be on the unders here than the overs. So that's my second official play. OK, I'll let Rory come back at uh, Will with this one first. So, I mean, Rory, what are your thoughts on this one? We, we think there might be fewer goals or, you know, Atleti reverting to type a little bit and off the back of that. I think I think that's a real key point that Will makes, actually, off the back of Champions League games um, that might not mean everything to these two teams because I think they were probably going to qualify anyway. But there seems to be quite emotion. Uh, Atleti were quite emotional in their game, I thought, at the end of it. And Barca were, were pushed a little bit further than I thought that they were going to be. I mean, what's your thoughts on this one? Yeah, I mean, I do agree with Will in terms of the the, the line here. I, I'm surprised it's so high because these two teams, like Will says, they do tend to be a bit more cagey against the bigger sides. It's a team that, in Barcelona's case, Robert Lewandowski isn't scoring right now. He's not in good form. Rafinha is, I, th I thought he was dreadful on, on Tuesday. I thought he was in really bad form. So if he starts, I think that's a, a good sign to back as well against goals. You're looking at an Atleti side that are playing well, that are scoring goals, but Alvaro Morata in the last two games has shown some sign of being the Alvaro Morata that you keep talking about when you talk about him because you have to mention that he does miss chances. So, so yeah, it's it's not a bet that I, I hate, certainly. I think the, there's two potential areas of kind of slipping up here, and that's one that is that I don't think Atleti's defence is as good as the metrics have shown. I, they've conceded an eight out of their 13 games. They're not a brilliant defence in my mind. They have been blowing teams away. And then the other factor is how much Xavi, who is under pressure in Barcelona, wants to risk it here because his whole thing, the whole Barcelona thing this season has been, we've signed Joao Cancelo, we've signed Joao Felix, we're going to be more attacking, we're going to play better football than we did last season. So far that's not transpired and you saw the temptation to include three central defenders against Porto. Will Xavi do that again just to eke out a result in, in a game he needs one in. I think probably so. So, yeah, as much as I would like to come back at Will and tell, tell him that this is a dreadful bet, I do, <laughs> I do actually quite quite like it. This is a game, Will, that I think uh, betters who don't normally play in La Liga will look to and they'll see Atleti away from home and they'll want to play unders in this game, won't they? Perhaps, yeah, perhaps. Although I don't know, the market's not thinking that currently with a 2.75 line. It's definitely... It's definitely uh, playing into the Griezmann best play in La Liga kind of uh, narrative. Uh, Steve, what's your thoughts on this one? I, I really like the bet. Um, yeah, I'm a changed man these days, aren't I? I really liking an under. Yeah, under. Uh, this this is kind of this is one of the few times I would look at head to head, and I would say head to head is significant because it's that type of matchup. And you look back and down the years, this is I mean, only three of the last eighteen games between these two have actually ended over three and a half. But you got to remember, his will is on under two point seven five. So if it was three goals exactly, you're only you still you're losing half. So it's a great line to be on. These these two teams met on the twenty uh, third of March, sorry twenty third of April, and the goal line was between two point two five and two point five that day. So what what has changed to make it to a genuine two point seven five line now? Is it this perspective that Athletic Madrid are you know more attack minded now? Um, I don't really see where the goals are going to come from, Dan. Um, I really don't. So it just feels like a, a tight, cagey, under sort of game. Let's get some picks from our senior handicapper. Uh, Steve's been in good form this season. We've got a Bundesliga and a Liga selection to talk about Saturday, 12.30. For your Bundesliga pick here, hmm. you are resisting 
an overs play, maybe even for the first time this season or certainly for the last few months since we realised that the Bundesliga was bountiful when it comes to goals. But uh, this is an Asian handicap play, Steve. I think this is the first show in a long time where there hasn't been at least an official pick or a lean from somebody on an over in, in the German Bundesliga. But maybe, as I say, that ship may be assailed now. I'm going here Stuttgart against Werder Bremen and I'm taking Stuttgart on the minus 1.25 Asian handicap at minus 118. Um, yeah, I mentioned them before, how I expected them to regress, but I mean, they are they have been legitimately strong at both ends of the field. They've got the second best numbers behind Bayern. And you can't really knock that. I mean, they've played 12 games now. They still have to play Bayern and Leverkusen. So they will drop down a little bit. They'll probably lose those games, but they're still going to be in the top four in terms of quality. And, and you know, they're facing a Bremen side who we don't really talk about Werder Bremen much too on this show, but they're, you know, they're not that great. They're, um, you know, they promoted a couple of years ago, 13th last season. You know, they, they're poor away from home this year, Dan. Um, I don't think they're doing very well as my cat gets involved here. And he's trying to put me <laughs> off talking about my pick as he comes across the screen. <laughs> you, you devil. But, um, yeah, I mean, look, growing up, growing up, right, you remember this, Dan, Will, probably as well. Yeah, Werder Bremen were a big team in Germany. They were winning titles. Thomas Schaff, I mean, he must have managed about a 1,000 games under them. Uh, but these days, they're not that. I think everyone in modern football thinks of them as just like a bottom half team and a Bundesliga two side. So Stuttgart at this moment in time, I can't knock their, their, their metric. So I'm taking this handicap. I think they'll easily beat them. It's uh, I'd like a little bit more value, but um, I couldn't really get away from this pick. Stuttgart are just impressing me too much at the moment. Yeah, we, you've sort of changed your opinion, I sense, uh, uh, about Stuttgart. Cause... I have, because, mm, yeah, I'll tell you why. Because they had a, a big setback against uh, Heidenheim. They lost that game. And I thought, here we go. They're going to really start regressing. But they bounced back brilliantly. We beat Dortmund and they battered them. They went to Frankfurt and won. They're just not letting off. I think they're a legitimately well-coached side. The squad, I've looked at it, um, and it still feels like the squad shouldn't be performing as well. But, the, the, look, this coach has obviously got He's, he's actually up coached some of these players and um you know with Garassi up front as well it's a big player but I, yeah I have changed my mind down a bit on him uh top four will they're minus 125 uh with bet Rivers to finish in the top four of the Bundesliga Leipzig at a minus 335 but Dortmund minus 250 they're shorter even though they are uh behind Stuttgart in the lead obviously by Munich and by Leverkusen no offers they're expected to get top four so there's two places off the grabs really can Stuttgart last that's the pace. Have you seen anything in your ratings that that would suggest maybe they are better than we initially thought this season? Yeah, they're certainly a lot better than we initially thought. That that's for sure. Um, I'd still favour Leipzig myself. And then as for fourth place, I guess it's between Stuttgart and Dortmund. Um, can't really think who the other runners would be. Maybe I don't think there is any. I mean, this, the Eintracht Frankfurt are plus sixteen hundred yeah. after that. Yeah. So it's between Dortmund and Stutt Stuttgart for me. And Stuttgart will probably have slight favourites, yeah. That's um, uh, the Bundesliga play from Steve. We've got a league and play as well. This is Sunday, uh, 11.05, and it's Lille uh, Metz. And this is very much the theme of uh, Ligue 1 this season, uh, Steve, with your play. And again, it's uh, uh, against what you would more naturally do. Just the sheer mention of Dortmund is making me shudder, by the way, there, Dan. I so, <laughs> I so wanted this second pick to be by a Leverkusen, but their price is, is annoyingly short against them um, for this round. The value is actually probably with Dortmund. But um, so I'm going with an under in France. I love this under Lille against Mess, under 2.75 goal line. We mentioned it on last week's show with James. Lille, um, I think you actually mentioned it, Dan, uh, the most profitable under team in the whole league. Um, 10 out of 13 under two and a half goals. They've only conceded three goals at home this year. Uh, really strong metrics as well, so they're not fluking it. Mets have the worst expected goals in Liga. Um, their last two games, they've actually scored three times in both. I, I quite like that because they've shot their load for the for the month. <laughs> or, or you know, what I mean, they, they, what, there's nothing left in their tank. They, they won't score here. They're, they're going to draw a blank here. Um, so it's all about Lille, really, and the, I think Mets will park the bus. Lille are playing away on Thursday night in Europe. We don't know the result there in Ljubljana, but they've not had a great record after playing in Europe this season. Uh, every match bar one has been an under um, after they've played in Europe this season. So I think we're looking at like 1-0 to Lille, 2-0 to Lille here. They'll eventually 
probably break them down enough. But I mean, the, the goal line at 2.75, I, I really like that line because it gives you that bit of extra security. If there's three goals exactly, you're only losing half your stake. But it's just been one of those games that I think defence against attack wave after wave. But the Mets will be quite disciplined and organised and hard to break down. And unless they score from the halfway line again, as they did that one day when they did me in, um, I, I don't see them getting hit in the back of the net here. Clip, clip that up for the socials. Yeah, I, I, I was going to say, <laughs> I, I hope that phrase that you used doesn't give us an R rating for the show. Anyway, <laughs> uh, <laughs> we've got some leans that we've got to rattle through. Uh, we did mention Rory's earlier, but Rory, um, let's just get your lean because it was a lean rather than a play. Just remind us of, of your lean in, uh, uh, for this weekend for La Liga. Yes, uh, following uh, Will at a slightly bigger price with Real Sociedad to win at Osasuna plus one two eight. I, I fancy them. Not not a long trip to Pamplona from the Basque Country after their midweek. Uh, uh, Will, you've got a couple um, both in France. One Friday, one Sunday. What are your two leans? Yeah, I like really like both of these. Actually, the, my first is um, Rams win an under 4.5 goals plus 102 versus poor Strasbourg team. We've spoken about Strasbourg before. They're very poor. I, we've managed to engineer here fifth place team versus the fourth, but 14th place team. And we can engineer plus money on a home win, which, you know, I just think, I just think Will still is going to tactically outthink Patrick Vieira here. I don't think Vieira really knows what his, uh, what his, how he's trying to set his team up and what his first choice 11 is. Um, Strasbourg are one of the lowest scoring and, and conceding teams in Liga, and they've only had 26 goals total in their 12 games so far, which is the third fewest in Liga. So I think the under 4.5 part should cop easily enough. So that's a Rams win and under 4.5 goals at plus 102. My second lean is also in Liga. Uh, I really like this one. Price has shortened quite a bit, though, since time of suggesting it, which was Brest minus a half versus Clermont minus 109. Clermont played midweek, fairly uninspiring game against Montpellier. Brest are coming in fresh and have quite an incredible, well, maybe not incredible, but formidable home record in Ligue 1 this season. Um, they, won, they won against uh, Lens uh, with a plus two XG supremacy in that game. They drew against Ron, but really should have won. Uh, sorry, Rens plus 1.2 XG supremacy in that game. They destroyed a weekly on team with plus 2.3 XG supremacy in that game. And the list really goes on. So Brest to win this game at just shy of even money, I think, is a fantastic bet. So that's my second lead. Yeah, it's got a little bit shorter, hasn't it? Effectively, Steve, you like this play um, uh, as well. I was just thinking, I hope Patrick Vieira doesn't listen to this show because he hasn't been getting much <laughs> love, has he? I'm, I'm sure he doesn't, Steve. <laughs> <Jeez. laughs> well, he might do, you never know. Uh, You're sick yeah. show up on the dressing room wall. I'm just, uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's his team talk done for him. Um, yeah. I do think, I, I like that player, Wills, there as well. There. Um, I'd be surprised if Strasbourg get anything out of that game. I was really close to having Brest as an official player, I must say. I, I think they'll beat Clermont. Um, Clermont have a poor squad. I don't know how they drew against Montpellier in midweek. It really annoyed me. Um, 32 shots they conceded for crying out loud. Um, they're gonna, it was a tough game for them on the back foot. I'm not sure what's left in their tank. And uh, Brest, yeah, it's just, I just wish the price was a little bit more. We always want more, don't we? But I just wish it was close to even money, really. Um, but yeah, I really like that. And my other lean is in. This, it's is mind's a this is again. a brave. This is a brave lean. This the is mind's the under again. Lean of the week. Every week, um, my lean's going to be mine's under two point five lean, uh, but I'm never going to have the balls to actually back it. <laughs> <laughs> um, the the books are starting to actually learn because under two and a half is now minus money for this game. Um, but this new manager, like I said, Leanne Seawert, hundred percent under record. It nearly went last week because they uh, there was a missed penalty, which should have taken the match over against Hoffenheim. But um, look. Freiburg had played in Europe. It might be a low tempo sort of game. Mines are going to play, make themselves hard to, hard to beat. So I think you want to be looking unders with mid Mines games at the moment. I keep saying it. Okay. Um, so those are the leans. Uh, let's just remind everyone of the official plays. Rory, your two picks this week are Girona to beat Valencia and over one and a half goals uh, in total. That's minus 104. And Real Betis to beat Almeria away from home at plus 112. Two plus many picks uh, that did for James uh, last week. Rory's going big again. Will, your two? 
Uh, Real Sociedad minus a quarter at plus 100 versus Osasuna. And Barcelona Athletic under 2.75 goals minus 104. Uh, Steve, what are your thoughts? Who will be triumphant this week? Do you know what? I actually predicted it right last week, didn't I? It's yeah, you did. very rare that I did that. I'm, I'm going to predict Will to win this week. <laughs> Mo- based mostly, I, I really do love both of the picks. Um, you know, Rory is, though, a man in form and mm. uh, formidable op- op- opposition right now. Uh, I think a lot's going to come down to the Almeria game. Yeah, that's the one where Betis. we've got different opinions. Yeah, that's the one. That's the interesting one. Um, keep my eye on there. Just a, just a note from my side. Surely if we go nil-nil, God forbid, the uh, the advantage has to go to the man playing away from home, right? <laughs> yeah, well, I'm yes. Taking, I'm taking on the yeah. leader expert in yeah. La Liga. Uh, yeah, well, well, that, and that man. <laughs> yeah, I didn't think about that. Well, we go to the hot dog, and then it is the defending champ. We sort of. To be yeah, fair, well, if Wills doesn't come in, then my lean is done anyway for Real Sociedad. Well, that's true. We go. I don't think. I don't think we. Do don't we have lean, out. Steve? I think we just do a hot dog, and then defending champions win. You've got to beat. I the think champion. that's what the boss You've said. Got to beat the champion. Yeah, you see. I but think. we'll keep the hot dog is the is the decider. If someone gets a hot dog up and the other two picks don't win, then we've got to give it to that man. But it'd be interesting. We're not going yeah. nil nil anyway. Not it won't go nil nil. <laughs> no, way. it won't go nil nil. Don't worry about that. Weeks. I should probably uh, should but yeah, that. forget about that. That was yesterday. Uh, Steve, Rory, Will, thanks for your company. Uh, good luck to all. We'll keep everyone uh, updated via our Twitter feeds. That is the wrap for betting weekly. Extra time European show. I'll be back alongside Steve next week, as will one of Rory or Will, who will be taking on RJ and stay across all of the Bet Rivers content this weekend via at Because We Win. From all of us for now, though, it is goodbye.